Yo, welcome to the K Says Sports Show, and I'm your host, Kane Bradfield. And y'all know my slogan, the fame is free, but the grind costs, baby. What's up, everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Kane Said. I'm your host, Kane Bradfield. Y'all know my slogan. The fame is free, but the grind, it costs, baby. Today, we're going to kick out this football conversation, baby. Y'all know I like to call people dogs, but these some real dogs, baby. I got some dogs in the house, and one by one, then we do some sales. You first, big homie. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, Amar, take it. Hey, old school of grain, high school of grain, and currently the principal of the Maggie Brown Middle School in Newton, Georgia. Yes, sir. Joe Kegel, I'm the head football coach at Lady Director of Special High School in Columbus, Georgia. Josh Moore, athletic director, head football coach at Best Academy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So listen, man, first of all, thank y'all for coming, showing love, you know what I'm saying, to the Kane Says Show, man. Football season around the corner. You know, football season around the corner, man. I want to get to the point of, you know what I'm saying, what y'all think. First of all, you know, in a few minutes now, I'm going to get to y'all particular schools, right? But what do y'all think football is at right now as we speak, man? I know we had that year, you know what I'm saying, dealing with COVID, all that type of stuff, man. So I don't know who grabbed this question, but what y'all think we at right now? Football is back. Forget <laughs> the COVID restrictions. Yeah. Football is back. Yes, sir. Grown man game is back. Hey, remember, it's only three sports. Varsity football, JV football, and spring football. Let's get it. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Listen, man. Hey, but y'all sign off on that, dude. Uh, I definitely sign off on it. I mean, yeah. everything's back. The fans are coming back. Okay. You know, the restrictions are easing up. The kids are excited to be able to work in a somewhat normal environment. Yeah. So we decided to get the grass and be ready to roll. We're ball. Oh, yeah. What about yeah. you, Coach? Oh, yeah, I agree 100%. I think, you know, football is going to be football regardless. Yeah. I think the biggest change in that is off the field stuff when you come to the NIL and things oh, yeah. like that. Man, you know we're going to deal with that, baby. You exactly. know we're going to talk about exactly. that. So I think that's one of the biggest things right now that's yeah. changing the game of football. So, but football itself, hey, the game is the game. This game is the game, right? I dig that. I dig that. So listen, team, I'm, I'm coming to you first on this. Man. I know you do a lot, you know what I'm saying, you know, as far as with the camps, man, as far as with the, you know what I'm saying, development prospects. You know what I mean? Tell me more about that, thing, dog. Well, some of the biggest things that, you know, regards to, you know, player development and also the recruiting part, you know, you got to make sure that these kids are at, at a young age, they're doing the right thing in regards to making sure they get trainers, uh, you know, in the weight room, speed development. Yeah. Also make sure that, that they get support specific training in regards to the position and that they're getting out there and they're figuring that the recruiting process out early. Because right now, with the transfer report of a high school kid, Hey, it, it's going to be so different moving forward yeah. into the next season because now most of these college are going to get transfer players first over over the high school kids. So, so as a parent, you got to make sure that you are doing the things, put, putting in the investment on the front end for the proper return on back. Right, right. So, Coach, so, so quick question, but you know, Bex, man, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know, wants to talk about this, man. You know what I mean? So tell me, tell me, you know, what sets y'all apart? I think it's just our approach to it. You know, it's bigger than football with us. Yeah. So the relationships we build with our guys with small environments, smaller school. So so you know, we get real intimate with our guys as far as just getting in depth and getting deeper into just on the field. Yeah. We deal with a lot of off the field stuff with those guys as well and our relationships they go way beyond twelfth grade. Mm. You know, I got guys that, that were in my first graduating class and you know, we talk all the time. I was texting one today about to pull up at the school. I told him I was getting up out of there early. Yeah. Just finished with the military and everything, but they always come back and we always dealt with them. like a second home for our kids. Right. So it's a right. lot deeper than football when it comes to us. Right. I, I dig that. So listen, man, listen, I know, man, for years, um, people always have given seven on sevens a bad name. You know what I mean? Give me y'all, you know what I'm saying? I start with you, Give me your, you know what I'm saying, your take on seven on seven. I mean, that's funny because actually, you know, me and Josh are 
know, two of our spearheads for our organization, 707. Mm. So everybody want these big name kids, yeah. you know, three, four, excuse me, four or five stars who have this this many offers to take their kids. So what we did was our organization decided to take the kids who were underutilized, mm. nobody knew about, and just work with them to get them better. Mm. But the difference in what we're doing is Instead of them trying to take them every weekend, and, hey, you gonna miss this for your school? Go do what you do with your school. You know, run track, play baseball, play soccer. And when you're not doing that, come to us. We're gonna go out. We're gonna work. We're gonna get better. We're gonna, like Tink said, we're gonna work on those sports specific skills. Yeah. So we're gonna try to get kids better. I dig that. I dig that. Will you second that, man? Yeah. I mean, I think seven oh seven is important. Um, you know, the game of football has turned turn, turn so much um, to pass. And now, you know, I still believe in high school football. That you gotta be able to run the football to be able to win a championship. Right. But bottom line, you gotta be able to throw that football now. So I think that it's just an add on. 707 is an add on to help prepare your offense and, and mainly, I think, it's the defense now. Mm. Because so many teams are going to throw the football. So it, it's it's so important that, that teams participate. Teams that don't participate, they know I'm a struggle against get passing Wow, wow. But, but see, look, I'm gonna tell y'all something though, man. But I've been with years, man. It, it was a a real life struggle, man, to get a lot of local coaches to fall in love with that. You know what I mean? Because at the time, man, people thought that, uh, <clears throat> people thought 7 7 wasn't football. You know, first thing they said was, well, you know, you're not tapping nobody. They got different type rules. But I feel like at the end of the day, God, it's, it's about time. You know, I don't know if you guys feel that way about that. I agree. Uh, the biggest thing, in my opinion, is it's really going to help the quarterback. Mm. It helps your quarterbacks, and like Team said, it helps your defensive backs. Yeah. Because you got to work your man to man coverage skills. And most times, you don't communicate with you don't play with mm. So it's going to push force you to be in an uncomfortable situation. But if you don't know, and play a different style of football, right? Like what you might be accustomed to. Right. And quarterback wise, this is going to help you read coverages, covered, uncovered, finding grass, finding open reads. Mm-hmm. Throughout the game, which is going to translate to when you play on Friday nights. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing like that Friday nights. No doubt. Nothing like that Friday nights, man. Weight room, man. Talk about weight room, man. You know what I'm saying? Anybody dive in this one. You know what I'm saying? What's y'all take on weight room? How important is weight room in you part- and y'all particular, you know what I'm saying, program, also in general? Though. This is none to go for. Yeah. I mean, you Ain't go, none of that. You go hand in hand. Yeah. I don't see how you can play football without getting that weight room. Right. You know, with us, like I say, we're a small program. I've never been to the playoffs with more than 35 kids. Mm. So if you ain't getting in the weight room, one, it's going to be hard to make through season. Yeah. Two, you definitely ain't going to get to the playoffs. Mm. So, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in what we do in that weight room. Okay. You know, because I tell the guy, look around. And, yeah. and, and remember when we were in that game last season. Yeah. And you want to come out. And when nobody on the sideline sitting in for you, <laughs> yeah. you had to stay out there. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you better get it in right now. Yeah. And, and you, that memory to fuel you in this white room. Mm. You know, but, but it's, I tell them, you got to build yourself up so you can have something to break down. But once the season starts, it's a constant breakdown of the body. Yeah. And if you don't build it up, you ain't going to last long out there. Mm. I, I agree with that, man. So what about, you know, you know, how y'all feel about, you know what I'm saying, outsourcing stuff as far as kids, you know what I'm saying, going to um, trainers. I mean, I mean, do y'all work closely with trainers or in, in that type of stuff? Well, I know in my situation, it, it kind of depends. I, I have a gym that's not too far from the school. I got one of my buddies I played college ball with that has a gym across town where I send kids to both. Mm-hmm. So when I know guys that are doing it the right way yes, sir. and guys that know what they're doing, I support that 100%. It's just, you know, the ones that kind of, you know, you get some that may just be a money grab. Mm-hmm. I just want to train kids and I'm, you know, right. I just play ball. But right. Way to take more than that. You know what you're doing when yeah. it comes to training. Yeah. So I, I, I like to at least get to know the trainers that are working with my kids and we dialogue with each other. But I'm all for my kids getting extra work, you know, outside of what we do. Because right. it only enhances you when you're doing it the right way and right doing way. the right folks. I dig that. And I think, piggyback on what Josh said, I think the biggest thing is finding somebody you can trust. Mm. Not to, to not only say, hey, I'm not trying to push you to another school to be your coach. But two, I'm not trying to tell you to do something different than you're being coached. Mm. Because if I'm telling you to do something from nine to twelve, you go to your train trainer from four to five or four to six, then we conflict it it you be the first right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's somebody I can trust who's gonna do stuff, and I'm not even saying necessarily the same, but we're still working enforcing the same mentality, the same techniques, they'll definitely they definitely get that. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I mean, I think it's critical. I mean, you know, I think the biggest thing here, the high school coaches, the trainer, got to work together. 
Uh, and I think they were together because, I mean, the bottom line, the end goal is to help make these student athletes be successful. But right. I think it has to be done. Um, and it goes back to the philosophy that it takes a village to better raise these kids. Mm-hmm. But it has to be done the right way. You know, one thing that Coach Kidd talked about, a lot of high school coaches have problems with trainers when they get involved in the transfer. Mm-hmm. The, kid, the kids start transferring from one school to the next school because they weren't trying to get it. Right. Oh. So I think that if you, can, if you can take out that right there, what high school coach is not going to say, hey, I don't want a little help because now they can work out the training. I can go spend more time with my family. I know kids still at work. Mm. So at mm. so the end of the day, it can be a per- it can be a perfect home or it can be a broken home depending on the situation. situation. I dig that. You know what I mean? I always tell people, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's something like, um, you know, supplement. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, like even, even my facility, you know, so I'm quick to say we never there to take over but the supplement. You know what I'm saying? Because in a day, man, you know what I mean? You guys want to answer know that thing. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I'm like a tutoring service. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know how a kid, you know, it's maybe like super dope in school. You feel me? But need a, a little extra little something, something. That fine tuning. That fine tuning. You, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But again, it goes back to that, that trust factor. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, can you trust that particular trainer or trust that particular facility? You know what I'm saying? To be on the same page you're on. Compensatory service. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know. Compensatory service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I dig that, man. I dig that, man. So listen, I'm going go back to, you know what I mean, dealing with camps. You know what I mean? So let's talk about, um, man, y'all summer planning for your kids. You know what I mean? Do you help you guys get the camps or do you expose them to camps or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, so give me that. So me personally, I feel like my job as a high school coach, and I, it's something I learned from Tank. If we don't win the game, I deserve to put you in a position to go to school somewhere after you graduate. In order to put you in that position, I got to give you an opportunity to camp. Mm. So we're always going to take a bus to the minority coaches camp, or see the Champions League camp, which is between 130, 100, 130 schools. So you'll have a chance to be seen by everybody. So you, if you have a chance to go, somebody's going to see you there that's going to want you. Right. It might not be Jordan, it might not be all, it might not be Alabama. But you can go to a Fort Valley, you can go to a Clark, you might be a Juco kid. But I'm going to put you in a position to be in front of somebody that can get you to school. I feel like as a high school coach, it's our job, after you play for us for four years, to do everything we can do to put you in a position to get us second level. So we got, in my opinion, campus body that. Mm. At this day and age. Right, 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 right. right, right. But then it come in the part where, you know, I mean, where you come into play. You know what I mean? To where you guys can, you know what I'm saying, partner up, you know, as we got like team to put people in position. You know what I mean? To be seen. But you do a lot of doggone, uh. We do a lot. Uh oh, uh oh, let me hear. Let me hear. Hold on. These two guys right here. Yeah. Are, are in charge of the college coach. So, wow. so, so any camp that, any camp that we do, these two gentlemen right here, they are hospitality for the, for the college coach yeah. to check them in. They make sure that the college coach needs everything that they need to be successful when they attend the Tampa League camp. We got a big HBCU camp this week in Atlanta. That's going to be over 1,500 kids. Man. That's going to be about 65 universities, all HBCU. We got other universities involved. Um, we got kids. We got kids from right now, 32 states, seven countries, come flying into Atlanta this weekend to participate. We got a transfer portal camp on Friday night, and we got the high school aspect of the camp. On Saturday, we got kids coming from everywhere, and, and, and as a whole, the minority coaches are enjoying. We are a team, so we are solidified at one, and all guys are directed in their position. Those guys are the director of the college coach. Wow! And I don't I do anything that. without them. I don't do anything yeah. without them telling me what to do. I should have been checking that out. right? Hey, I made mean, it. Look, they said we go back to week. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but them guys got a job. They. They they are the master of the capital of their soul. They they own that area. Mm, I, I like that, man. So this is a, how do we get? You know, how do well? Not, you know, I mean, how do y'all get to a point, man, where you can have a connection with enough college culture to pull this off? Cause I mean, I mean, that's major, though. You know what I mean? It's about relationship. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, 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 big on genuine relationships. Yeah. And when people know that you're genuine and, and that you do things the right way, people support. You. You know, and over time, you build those relationships, and it kind of gets hot. You don't right. have to, you know, like I say, uh, you don't ever see commercials 
for Rolls Royce. Right. You don't see Lamborghini commercials. Right. You know, they, they sell themselves all yeah. the time. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's the same kind of, you know, way we go about it. You know, we just build on gym relationships. And, you know, word travels and we just keep building off of that. And, and when coaches realize, like in my situation, like I say, we don't have a lot of kids. But we've been fortunate to have one or most of the kids signed every single year we had graduating class at best. Mm. And so with that, I have coaches that come over. I may not have a kid from Wake Forest or Georgia this year, but they're going to stop by. Because if I know it's a good kid in the city somewhere, a good kid somewhere else that may be under the radar or, you know, may not be, hey, coach, you definitely need to go check this kid out. And when they realize that, that you're about the bigger picture and you're about just kids in general and not just your kids, mm -hmm. They'll come. They'll come that way. I like that. And listen, let's take me to the next question. You know, the next conversation, I want you to say questions. The next conversation is, you know what I'm saying? Okay, for athletes, you know, you know getting um, looks. You know, how do you get, because it was crazy, because last week I was talking to some basketball coaches. And we were talking about how, you know what I'm saying, a basketball player could be 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 and he's undersized. Right? And I was like, if you come to football, He'll be a prospect. You know what I mean? So how do you guys have that conversation with a basketball player who's saying that, that, that you know, not that you're stealing from a basketball coach. You know what I mean? But you saying, yo, listen, I'm going to be honest. You know what I'm saying? You have an opportunity to play basketball, right? But, man, if you come to football, you know what I'm saying, your chance of getting a, a, a you know, bigger look changes. You know what I mean? So what's that conversation? Or, or have y'all ever had that conversation? I have that conversation daily. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, I mean, I think the biggest thing is, you know, just being honest. I mean, tell you, you know, I'm not trying to take away anything you're doing basketball-wise, but you playing football, you know, that physicality, the weight room, it's going to translate to the court. Because, mm. you know, I would say out of the state champion, majority of them have some ties to football. Okay. okay. And there's going to be some ties to that physicality because – can't change that physicality, the competitiveness, the weight room, the camaraderie, that's a, that's, that's a part of it. Mm. So I think just having that conversation and telling like, hey, I'm not telling you not to play, but this is going to open up your academy. And another thing is getting the basketball coach on board. Mm. If he's on board with it, then he can kind of push those kids together. Okay. Because I kind of tell him it's like fishing. Okay. You catch more fish, the more reels you have in the water. I like that. You throw that one reel in, yeah, you might get a bite. You throw two, three, four reels in, yeah, you gonna get a fish something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, so you yeah. want you want to starve, you want to eat. Right, bottom, right. Bottom line, and right. Just try to be honest with that conversation. I like that. I like that, Coach. I see you choking the fish, baby. Give it, <laughs> give it to me, baby. I, I actually had that situation this year. Okay, but um, you know, we had a kid came out first year playing football in high school. And he ended up getting a scholarship, but at the end of basketball season, really nothing there. And the school that we got off him the football scholarship also gave him a partial basketball as well. Okay. But, you know, basketball alone, it, it wasn't that available for right. him. Right, right. You know, but um, but me, as an AD, you get a little bit more control over this situation. But with me, I push my kids to participate in multiple sports. What's that? I, I don't like the specialization because it increases chance of injury. Fatigue, you know, and just overuse. So I like my kids in multiple sports. So with football, with us, we don't do mandatory winter lift in voluntary form. But I push them to go play other sports, okay? So that you can use those different muscles and you can get some different coaching, and, you know, get with some different teammates. So when we come back together, you're ready to rock and roll. You're a lot more refreshed, you know, than you would be just being with me 365 days a year. Mm. So um, I, I push that. But when you can show kids. It's the outcome. Yeah. And, you know, they, they kind of understand a little better. But my whole thing with my guys is do whatever you can to make yourself more market. Mm. Academics, athletics, you know, your character outside of the facilities, you know, at home. Do whatever you can to make yourself as marketable as you can. Because if, I'm just, I'm a salesman. So the more accessories you got, I can sell that to somebody. If you ain't got no accessories to go along with you, that's all I sell. Mm. So the more marketable you are, the easy it is for me to help you. I like that. I like that. You want to tag into that one? Hey, I'm a number guy. I'm yeah. Like, I mean, I look at I look at the data. I, mean, I just look at the data. You know, bottom line, football is a big man game. Right. Uh, and when I say it's a big man game, whether you're a defensive lineman, offensive lineman, receiver, playing against a smaller DB, a bigger DB, playing against either smaller or same side DB. 
know, you take a basketball player that's six two. I don't care if you six two, you two thirty. You are a pretty defensive lineman or a linebacker. Mm. If you are six two, hundred ninety, hundred ninety pound wing, you are pretty DB. So when you start looking at you know the true data, you look at from a standpoint of most basketball team at, at the collegiate level don't have anywhere from twelve to fifteen scholarships. Where you look at where you at the Division One level. A five scholarship, FCS six five. You look at the bid two forty five, um, and you start going down. In the high is unlimited. Uh, you know there are some junior college like Kansas that have eighty five scholarship. Look at the data. Numbers don't lie. Okay, that's what you got to look at. So opportunity is there in football or basketball. Unless you just that dude, yeah. when you start looking at the, how they how basketball has been recruited even before the transfer portal, they were signing JUCO players. Post grad players. You got, got new basketball players. Now. Unless you were a lead five star, a four star high school kid, you had to go to some junior college, and then the school is going to come sign you after one year in junior college basketball or two years. Football, it, it, they've been signing high school kids for years, for years, and they're going to continue to sign. When we look a little bit different transfer for now, but the numbers don't lie. Data don't lie. You know, they, it, it, it don't lie. And that's why I think kids should play multi sport and should not just lock themselves in the one sport. Mm, mm. So early on camera, y'all was talking about, you know, what's popping there in college, you know, in NIL. You know what I'm saying? So, so, now it, it, it maybe it, it may sound crazy, right? But well, what kind of effect is that going to have on high school athletes? Well, I think I think the biggest thing is from from a high school prospect and their parent, they're going to have to be educated early. Um, there are some companies, um, of course, I'm including one, that we're going to start going in. We're going to start educating parents and prospects at a younger age. Now, we're talking about educating the sophomore junior. Because, number one, when you look at things like most of, the, most of them don't understand it. Number one, you need your LSC. You need your own EIN number. Yeah. You, need, yeah. you need to know what these contracts say. Are you signing a contract that just says commission? Because just say commission. If you don't say them or, or or they give you a two percent commission and they go say a ten thousand dollars, you ain't made no money. Well, they, 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 they made all the money. So there are some educational things that these athletes understand, like your PayPal. Are you get paid through your personal PayPal? Or did you set up a business, business PayPal yeah. or business? So there are some things that parents need to know that they have no clue. Like right now, when they have the last week, the athletes just jumping out there. Oh man, I've been mean, watching. Uh, they didn't have no LSC. They didn't have an no EIN number. They didn't go by their name. They didn't go by Kane Bradford. Right. Dot, dot com. Right. You need to go by your, your own domain name. But I, like, look, my son, 13 years old, he may not be worth three dead fly. I already bought his domain name. You got to get it. Because you better go buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else is going to buy it. They're going to come back and resell it to you for an astronomical number. So it's important that parents and high school know. Mm hmm. I was just on the phone with. Uh, but when I reps at the school, uh, one of the beautiful things was we got a, a direct partnership with 100 Black Men of Atlanta. Okay. You know, they're one of our, our premier partners with Best Academy. So they come meet with the kids weekly, monthly. You got Emerging 100 that comes over there and they mentor every senior that we have. Each one of them has an individual mentor that um, works with them throughout their senior year and, you know, keeps up with them. Yeah. And I was talking to, um, to our guy at the school on the way down. Because I talked, I was talking to one of my players in college. Right. And we were talking about, you know, endorsement deals and all of this. And um, one of the things we discussed was, you know, we have pods with the kids where we talk about different things. Now we need an NIL pod, you know, and that has to be more about, you know, different kinds of accounts, a business account, a personal account. You know, we talked about, you know, LLCs, EIN, um, and start talking business side of things to the players and the parents so they get a better understanding. You know, we know we can't do it in high school, but they'll be more prepared for when they do go off to college. They'll have a lot of knowledge, like Tink was saying, you know, about how to go about and how to navigate through those things. They have a network of people they can reach back to. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of those guys, 100 business owners, the lawyers, the doctors, you know, so they're in those areas where they can directly help a lot of our kids with that. So, you know, that's one thing I was having that conversation on the way in today. I dig that, dig that. Coach, you, you want some of that? I mean, these things, like Tink said, education. Yeah. Don't get yourself in a bad situation in high school yeah. that one, you're not, that you're not going to benefit from and somebody's going to benefit off of. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
don't let somebody use you, right? And you don't even you're not even aware of the situation, or getting yourself to a situation that you can't get out of at a later moment, right? right. Of lack of education in high school. Mm -hmm. And yo, I ain't gonna front y'all like like you know what I'm saying. Um, if a parent is smart now, you know, I would start, start building my even kid in high school, a middle school. You know what I'm saying? Start building my son's brand, my daughter's brand. What do I mean by that? My social media brand. You know what I mean? Starting making them look attractive. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So now when you guys do that back end stuff, it gonna look good on on the front end as far as them looking good. Like yo, he's marketable. She's marketable. You know what I mean? Right. And you just gotta remember, you know, parent make sure you know that y'all remember. Parent gotta remember number one. As long as you're in high school, in out of here. Did not apply. This is an right. NC2A rule. If you take money right now, you have to forfeit your, your amateur rhythm status mm -hmm. for high school and for the NC2A. So now that's saying that you are professional, that means no scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I think the big thing is, you know, when you look at it right now, I think most people are looking at male athletes like they're going to make all the money. Right. I disagree. It's going to be the female because. When you start getting somebody easy on the eye, they got X, Y, Z, yeah. Instagram, follower. Those are going to be the ones that are going to be able to market across the social media platform because they got all these millions of followers. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I remember those Gonzalez twins that used to go to UNLV back uh, a few years ago. They had so many followers. They ended up fourth and last year. They graduated early and, 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 and became pro followers because of... Because that's gonna be the money. And I think I read one article where the one young lady in Texas, she's gonna be the first million dollars, she's gonna be the first million dollar contract because she has so got so many Instagram followers. The gym. The gym. Yeah. She's gonna be the first one to get the first million dollar uh, she'll be the first one to get the first million dollar contract. The mother good was she uh, Masterpiece. Yeah, I'm about to say Masterpiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they say her is going to be bigger than his. Right. right. Really. Right. Yeah. He got yeah. two million out there. That's right, right. Be way more than right. that. Right. But again, they go back because she's a female. And, and, and it's, it's going to be, he's on the eye. She already yeah. had millions of followers. That's the correct. Thing. You got the followers. Yeah. yeah. People you can reach easier. Yeah. Right. right. More people yeah. I can reach. I can market. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Correct. Yep. 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 I mean, so, so that's what I was saying. If I was a parent now, not so much of uh, your tech money. But start building your kids, like, control their social media. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? Control their social media. You know what I'm saying? Because in other days, they want to press in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because now, since they got that, the, the whole deal of, of people being able to sponsor you and get to college, like, you sure enough got to be careful to push it now. You know what I mean? So that, that, but, but, again, so, but let me ask y'all this, though. Let me ask y'all this. Now, what's the negative? Of this being passed, I think it's about to affect the crew. Um, maybe not on the surface, but look at what Miami just did. What Miami just had, I should, and not Miami, but a business owner in Miami just said we're gonna sponsor. We're gonna give every Miami football player one of alumni six thousand dollars. We're gonna really? let you, yeah. And so that's that ninety player six thousand dollars. So so imagine when these big universities now got alumni and boosters on their own company, and they're gonna say, okay, all right. My Tinga is a four star, five star, and they get word to his parents and how hey, you come to XYZ oh, University, okay, yeah. we're gonna give you a two hundred thousand endorsement. That's no different than passing the bag. Yeah. Now we just gonna legally do it in an endorsement. We're gonna legally do it now. So get what the parents say. You sure two hundred? I take four hundred thousand. I take four hundred. Yeah. Okay, well, so now it's gonna be a bid and we're gonna build. Oh man. Yeah. And I think from the college coast side, that's gonna be. It's gonna be a unique dynamic for them because now it is, you can't avoid it. Yeah. So you got to figure out how you gonna incorporate with what you do because yeah. you can't avoid it. Okay. So either you are gonna be frustrated because in your it's gonna be a distraction based mm -hmm. on what you trying to do, mm -hmm. or you gonna figure out a way to incorporate it into what you got going on within your program mm -hmm. to eliminate from being as much of a distraction. Mm -hmm. So I think that's gonna be the biggest juggling act that the college coaches gonna have to make trying mm -hmm. to figure out how they incorporate it. And, and you know whether they even incorporate it or not, but it's gonna be inevitable. They ain't got no choice. Right. But you right. have kids in the coach. I don't make their money. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So what's gonna yeah. happen if you got practice at two o'clock? But it's boosted and got even twelve thousand dollars. Hey, man, I need to get this event. You got to get this event. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. So how are you gonna like Josh? How are you gonna navigate that? Because it could be a tricky situation. You know how to figure out a way to incorporate. Okay. Yeah. If you think about it now, you got what the universities are doing. They're going out there. And they're partnering with these companies now. With these management companies come in, educate their player, educate their family. So, so I'm gonna ask you who could do who could do the most for the kid. 
from a legal aspect of endorsements and, and, and just brand yeah, yeah. brand yeah. So okay now, me and my HBCU, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, I thought but now now uh, since you guys said I'm like, oh what, oh what? You know what I'm saying? What Prime is, is, is doing and other coaches are doing, I, I think it's phenomenal, doing a real good job. But now, since you put it that way, I think now HBCU's gonna have a hard time now. At first I thought we, we, we was getting over that that hump. But I don't think we can give kids six thousand, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna say I don't think we can. I know we can't. I'm gonna say that. I'm not a 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 I'm be a Clark Atlanta kid that may be, you know, a, a Savannah State kid, you know, he might have some some of those FCS or these high tier programs that may be trying to give a partial, may be considered. Yeah. So I think still it's going to kind of mm-hmm. balance itself out when it comes to that because it, it, it's not that many times that you got Jackson State fighting against kids that's trying to go to Georgia. Mm-hmm. You, we, you come to us or come to, as much as we would like for it to be like right. that, it just ain't. But see, I'm gonna tell you though, man. I thought for a second, I thought for a second that we was about to have that type battle. You know what I mean? Oh, to where? Really? Oh, wait, hey, to you? Yeah, but listen. Oh, no, no, no. Listen to me, dog. Look, yeah, hear me out. Look, yeah, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Listen, hear me out. Listen, man. Listen, cause I'm following this Brian. Like, and maybe I'm, I'm in too deep following Brian right now. <laughs> what you want to tell me, right there? So Brian, to me, man, he was turning the corner to get. Now, not a whole lot of power five. I mean, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I thought he's going to turn the corner to start maybe stealing some, not stealing some. You know, what I'm trying to say getting some. But now with this, I think he settles back. I'm telling you, man. I thought for a minute that not every HBCU, but I thought that he was in the pos- he put himself in position. He was going to he was start getting some of those players. What? Well, what? What? He didn't get none. No. He got one. Who he get? The cornerback. But you don't know why. Pick up the phone and call somebody sometime. You don't know why he went. That's for Jack State over Georgia. It's a reason why. Oh, I'm yeah, that's true. Okay, so. I, I, yeah. All right. 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 Yeah. Now, we're going to leave that. I'm going to get into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Leave it yeah. Yeah. okay. So, oh, so it's a twist and turn behind. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's always. Always. Twist and turn behind. Yeah. Yeah. Even when they peak. Oh, I'm going to try to man. Right, man. Appreciate hey, you. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. He ain't with you. He, uh, he hey, wouldn't. Hey, let me ask you a question. Would you let your kid go to Jack State or Georgia? But listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a yes no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm saying he would turn the cone. What I mean by this, I ain't saying next year. But I really thought in the next three years, the trash is going to be better. At a Jackson. You ever been to Jackson, Mississippi before? I have. All right, then. Yeah, I know it's bugging out there. Okay, empty. All right, then. It's empty. All but right. I'm saying, but you feel what I'm trying to say, though. Now, 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 hey, I'm trying to help you. Start, I appreciate it too, big dog. When you start talking about maybe some FCS program, yeah, yeah. but when you start talking about power five, power five. That, it, it's going to be some twist and turn for him to kids from mm-hmm. a program like that. It's it more okay. to it than, than that. You got to scratch the surface. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the thing about the fan versus. Because, right, in my opinion, really. Like I think Prime is doing a great job marketing. Yeah, but that really that's hurting high school recruiting way. Okay, talk to me. because as opposed to a Jackson State, an Alabama A and M, Alabama State recruiting a kid who's a you know a FCS kid or you know doesn't have the quote unquote four or five stars, they're gonna say, well, if Prime recruiting, why well, can't get a five star? Or why can't be after this kid? Or like Tink said, go into the transfer portal. Portal. So we're not looking at those high school kids as much. Mm-hmm. Like we had, me and Josh had a long conversation with a coach while we were at the camp about that same situation. Mm-hmm. Well, Jackson State recruited this kid. I got to at least stay in the same ballpark with him. What does he have to offer that I can't offer? Now I know I can't offer what Georgia can offer right, right now, but I definitely offer what he offered. So in turn, what really, it really just turns around and hurts the high school. 
Right. right. Yeah. Because they put all that time in recruiting that kid who they wasn't going to get. Correct. So now they didn't recruit XYZ over here right. who can play at those universities now and can be successful, get a degree, and be successful in the field. So it's just some of this stuff is really hurting. It's hurting high school kids probably more. Wow. And I, and I would say that every, I think Prime did a great job. Definitely. But what he done, all he really did was just bring more exposure because of who he did. But transfer been going to HBCU for years. Oh, yeah. If you go look at Tennessee State right, right now, Tennessee State got more Division One transfer than what Jack State. Fam, you got more Division One yeah. transfer. But don't cook have got more Division One tra- transfer. Texas Southern got more. Mm. It's gonna be a whole different ball game to swag this year when he gets. He gonna have better players than he ever played. Okay, but get what? He seen fam here now. Fam will be most team in the in in in, in, in Conference USA. They'll be uh, who George Southern with Sun Belt. Uh-huh. Sun Belt. They will be most team in the league right now. Really? Oh yeah. Fam got them dudes. Mm. They got dudes now. Yeah. So. I'm talking about and well coat. This right. ain't this ain't overload athletes and right. Not oh, it's ABC. They not well coat. But the Simmons did a great job. Mm. They got both kickbacks. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So okay. Damn, man. So I was all excited. I was like, man, fail for the, I mean, uh, Brian finna make this. Uh, he finna challenge the Power Five eventually. It's how I was feeling for a minute, man. He did something that should have been done, which is a lot of teams exposed to HBCU. Right? Yeah. But, but the other part of that, too, is the administration. They bring it in Dion. They, they bring it in um, Ed, George. Ed George. And they give them more resources than they've ever given any other coach right. that they've right. had in their program. And right. they've had historical coaches. Right. So right. you pumping everything behind them. You should expect some type of success to come from right, that. Right, right, right. You know, if right, you're giving right. them a bigger pool to, to, to pay the assistant coaches, mm-hmm. more money to recruit. You're giving them a bigger pool to pay themselves. Mm-hmm. Like you say, you're giving them more money to recruit. Yeah, they get yeah. more gear, more, you know, you upgrade yeah. and stuff. Yeah. You're doing things that you've never done for the program before. Mm. Mm. So imagine if we've done this with some of these coaches that we have had in our program that are from quality coaches at the HBCU, what if we put this same energy and fund and support behind them, who's to say that they wouldn't have a lot of this same or similar success? Right. There's a lot of HBCU coaches now who are different university, who had coaches who, they had great staff, but they just got tired because they didn't have the they didn't have a support staff that, again, Eddie George is getting right now, Prime is getting right now. So you know what? You look at some of these schools, they were doing three and four jobs. They were the head coach with a head coach. He was yeah. equipped their manager. He was the mm-hmm. DFO. Mm-hmm. So, but now, places, places like Tennessee State and, and Texas State, they went out of hobby. They the high directors and recruiters. So, again, mm-hmm. why did the administration change now? Because you got Deion Sanders. You got Eddie George. But, but again, you know, you had XYZ. You wouldn't do it. What's the what's the what's the difference? But you got to think about this though. You, you got to think. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I think was different. Is. You know, what I mean, let's say if if, um, if uh, you know we were rappers, all those rappers, right? You know, what I mean, we killing it. We, we doing our thing, right? But we mess around and keep little baby on our track. You know what's gonna happen? He gonna sell more records just because, yeah. and because you got little baby, you gonna sell more records, and because you got more money, now you can do more with it. So I think by having prime him, yeah. look at the tennis. Jackson State had the high FCS attendance before Dion. Before Dion. Not to my, but yeah, but, but, <laughs> I ain't know that, don't be real. Yeah, we're not talking about HBCU. We're talking about FCS. Kenneth Stone, we're talking about, we talk about, we talk about, we talk about North Dakota. Jackson State, State, the highest. We're talking about every year. Every single year, they got the highest. See, I don't know. Dang, man. I can't go by that. I'm best of all. Right? Yeah. Right. Wow. Oh, yeah. Because, now, I'm going to be honest, though. So that's the argument right now. You know what I mean? People are saying why people like Eddie George get the job and people like Prime get the job when you other people who will qualify more. Right. But, you know what I mean? But my argument backwards, and y'all just fixed that, my argument backwards, you know, I felt that those names brought they money. Do. They do. But and they, they do. They're going to buy sponsors. Correct. Right, 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 right. You see what I'm saying? Because if you hire, let's just say, if you mm-hmm. hire Joe Kevin in Tennessee State, okay. who cares? If you hire Eddie George in Tennessee State, he's on Sports Center, we can market it, he played in Tennessee, you know, this, that, and the third. Yeah. So it's a huge difference as to who he can reach or who's willing to 
partner with them at that point. Right, 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 right. So I think that what made, you know what I'm saying, administration yeah. get better for that, you know, give them a more. I think, man, now I did read this. I think Prime increased the, uh, his presence, increased their revenue like, what, 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 40 million? It was, it, was, it, was, it was some type of, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, and, it, and it does increase that revenue, but I, I was saying that to say that they do have funding. Yeah. That they could be using and using it in better ways mm -hmm. to support these programs. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily they got as much as they got with Prime, but if you are using that fund the right way, you marketing the program, putting it out there, doing some of these things you're doing now, you weren't doing it before. Right, right. So some of these things you could have been doing without that yeah. extra million here and there, yeah. and you could have still been bringing your program and having this success with that program. Right, right, right. And, right. and to me, the only thing, like you take a prime or, or, or Ed and George, it gets the alumni, it gets the alumni excited. Right. And with yeah. alumni, so you say the revenue went up, the only thing went up, well, they probably sold more t shirt they probably sold more. Yeah. I'm not even gonna say more season tickets. We out on ABCU, they come to class again when home comes. Yeah, I know. Look how space pay. So now if you start to my, I went to you, let me go get me another t shirt. Let me go get me a license plate. Let me go do this right here. So those are the things alumni got excited. Because when you say boost the revenue, I don't, I'm not gonna say it's sponsorship. I think it's more now we're able to sell more merchandise and paraphernalia. Uh, uh, in regard to the university and what you can do and get more people excited. Mm. Mm. You think about that one, Cole? Yeah, I was like, dang, man, you got me on that I mean, but that makes sense, though. You know what I'm saying? So, so guys, let, let me ask y'all this, though. You know what I mean? So, for administration, we're talking administration, you know what I mean? What's the now, now, team, you probably know about nigga. You don't know about HBC. You like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that, that, that Hold on, now. I was an AD in two different black schools. <laughs> 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 oh, know. Yeah, you know, you know, it ain't no different. Right, 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 right. And you go to all the classes. Yeah, and you go to all the classes. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 as far as administration, man, you know what I'm saying? What do we gotta do? You know what I'm saying to make sure to make sure our administration stay a one. Or the geek tape one. And y'all and y'all opinion. The biggest thing we gotta do is get back. Mm. I don't think HBCUs, I don't think we do a good job of you know paying our alumni dues and giving back to our university. I think that's all I ain't paying a dude about our stages. I can graduate right <laughs> <laughs> 1997. Right. And I ain't paying either. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So I mean I think you know that that's the biggest thing. Yeah. You support your school, you know. Mm. You can't complain about stuff once you leave. And then don't do nothing about it. Yeah. It's easy to complain if you're not doing nothing about it. Mm, mm. And that's one of the same things I agree. Um, you know, I had to get more involved at Clark Atlanta. And um, I've been getting with Coach Bowens and just going over there, purchase old jerseys and just trying to get back to the program. I, uh, we probably going a week or so to go feed the boys out to work out some things yeah. like that. But, a lot of times, like I said, we just don't give back to the program, and, and you know it's hard to, to ask for something and demand stuff when you ain't contributing to it. And, and that came from just dealing with it on the high school level, right? You know, you get right. all these demands. How long you ain't contributing to the program? But you yeah. demand the whole lot <laughs> yeah. out of us. You know, we yeah. driving kids all over the place, paying for you know camp registration. I'm buying clothes, shoes, food. You know, getting hotels and That's you, you, you may get us. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you may get. Thank you, Coach. Every now and then, you might get a little twenty dollars, but for the most part, you're just doing it because you want to make sure your kids are successful. You give them the, the best opportunity you can, mm. and you know that kind of opened my eyes. You know what? I got to start getting back to my school. Mm. You know, I got to start being an active alumni. And, you know, and so like Ken said, that's one of those things. I mean. We ain't giving back. It's hard to demand a whole lot. It's hard to demand a whole lot. Then, man. But see, I think y'all too nice. Okay. And the reason I said that, if you go and you look at, okay, I'm a data guy, I'm a numbers guy. If you go look at the majority of the HBCU, they have recycled these ADs from university to university. These ADs have nothing. The A they, they, they're not innovative. They just go from university to university. They they lack the, the experience fundraise. And we can say and say the line don't give back. But there are other ways to, to do things. Uh, again, it does start with, with the alumni. Mm. But again, how creative are you to be able to, to draw them in? Because remember, if you build it, they will come. I oh. feel the dream. So when you look at it, look at AD. I was just looking at Clark. I was looking at Clark Atlanta and more out last night. We got Dawson at, 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 Clark, at Clark Atlanta. He's been recycled. 
like four or five different HBCUs. And the HBCU he's been at, it's not that they, they, they've not really been successful. So we're recycling the same thing. It's not innovative. Morehouse is the same way. So look at, I mean, look, look at who lead these athletic department. It's the same old people. You know, I would rather go with, I would rather go with somebody young who's going to innovate. Prime example, take the AD at Georgia. He was at Georgia. He went to Mia Sapp College. He started some new stuff in Mia Sapp College. The football game, the tennis went up. The money went up. Boom. He ex- he exploded because of the things he'd done on Spar Tech. And he came, he came back to Georgia. You got you got to start looking at some of these younger people who are more progressive thinking, who are more innovative, who know how to use social media, who know how to go out there. You may not have the funds to be able to hire full-time staff. Everybody looking for interns. Everybody looking for interns. Right. But the thing is, the thing, like you said, how do we hold the administration and, and get them to you know to buy in? If you're not involved, ain't too much you can say to right. the administration, so you don't have no say. Right. So the more you get involved and the more people you can get involved, the more say you can have on getting that innovative AD in here as opposed to we just sit back and we just, man, who done brought in them? Mm-hmm. If, I want you, if I want you fire Coach John Moore, www.firecoachjockmore.com. I'll get you fired. I'll get you out of there. <laughs> you come out of there. I'll get you out of there. I'm hey, sorry. That's how I might take you out of there. Right, right, right. 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 You're looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah. Brian. Come on, Brian. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're going to go. Now, as far as coaching, let me ask y'all something, man. Something about brotherhood for a minute. You know what I mean? It's crazy that we know you know, some of the same coaches. You know, um, man, what about sports? that create that brotherhood? I mean, I guess, you know, somebody going through the same stuff you're going through. Yeah. I mean, somebody to talk to that's, you know, dealing with some of the same headaches, the same yeah. ups and downs that you can deal with. Mm. I mean, I guess that's, you know, the closest thing I can say. Now, so, but let me ask y'all this, though. When I'm saying, could you also create that same brotherhood, you know, with your cross channel rival? Or you like, nah, nah, I got to keep that. Well I, well, I would say that when I was the head coach at Kendrick, uh, Kig was at Carver. We used to do things together. I mean, we would go to cup. We had we go couple night. We used to go half an hour every Friday. Yeah. I remember. I remember. I was at Creek County. I was at Creek <laughs> County. We played. I was, I was going to Creek County, and, and I am going to Carver next year. We played coach them first round of the playoff. I think I, I know I met somebody half an hour play. <laughs> Right out, right out. Yeah. Hey, so, yeah. so I mean, I, I'm, you know, I mean, I think, you know, when you on the field, you're trying to, you're trying to win the game. But at the end of the game, I mean, it's still, it's still a child game. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it, I mean, if you can't be friends off the field and have the camaraderie uh, 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 that it takes as far as being brothers, being men, yeah. I mean, you got an issue because it's a child game. I mean, you beat me, you beat me this year, then by God, you know what? Until three hundred sixty five next year. We good. Right. I'm trying to work, trying to beat you, but right. we still going to hang out. We're going to have a good time because, to me, this is what be a, the, the bond, the relationship. And like Coach Kid, I'm going to make a, you know, Coach Sigma. Mm-hmm. One thing I'm always respect, I'm, I'm going to respect anybody that whether you are Alf or you a Cal, because I know you play. It might have been different than what I went through. Mm-hmm. But I know you play it. Same thing at coaching or the same thing at playing. You play ball. We might have we might have went through some different stuff, but some of it was similar. I got respect for you, and I think that that's the camaraderie. Even after even after people get you playing the game on the field, man, great job because hey, we went to war together. But when it's over with, man, it's over. It's over with. It's over. With. And, and it's kind of funny you say that because I didn't really know Josh mm. until we played in the playoffs. Mm. And now that's kind of one of my the people I'm closest to as far as coaches. Okay. So before that, I mean, I knew of best. Yeah, I knew of Josh, but as far as us actually talking, working together, communicating, all that happened after we played. Mm. Mm. Like our respect for what he was doing with his program, you know, he had similar kids that I had at the time, so it's kind of like, you know, it's somebody that you know I'm kind of on the same level, on the same level. With. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the schedule changed for young folk from for, for Lagrange and for um, True, you know, since so you guys played them, right? He played Lagrange. He played Lagrange True. You know what I mean? What did that? You did a thing for y'all, y'all like, after your schedule, let's go. We in the same region. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, was it like, okay, y'all, you know, we got the grain. And then, cause see, so the grain got a history, right? You know what I mean? I know people can't play off the history. You know what I'm saying? So when the grains got added, did it? 
I mean, coach, the grand and true, they both yeah, right, right. job. Right, right. So, I mean, you know you're going to have to, you know, And I said this in a newspaper article. They asked me maybe seven years ago. Okay, y'all are moving up. Right. What are you gonna do? You put it, you put your best eleven on my best eleven, and we are gonna let the cars fall where they may. Mm-hmm. That's all I can do. Mm-hmm. Coach them up Monday through Thursday, and we hope they execute as best as possible on come Friday. Right. And what's gonna happen is gonna happen. Yeah. And then if, it, if I win, I win. If you win, the next three hundred sixty-four days, and I'm trying to find a way to beat you next time. Right. 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 I, I, I dig that. So I mean, that's just yeah. It is what it is. Right. I, I, I get it. I do. You about to say something? <laughs> <laughs> you going to say that? You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm, I'm okay, man. Yeah. You lying your 11 up against mine. Yeah. Dude. On the left people, we're on the field this time. I don't care if I got 35 or you got 70. Shit got big left. Strap it up, we gonna go. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you wasn't saying when you had Crowell and Jarvis Jones and all that. You wasn't saying. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Hey, uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> next question, please. Why I dig that, man. So, so okay, listen, man. I want to talk about this. Um, they talk about parent support in you guys' program. You know what I'm saying? I know in um, football, a lot of times, you know what I'm saying. Um, okay. Okay, baseball to me has a lot of support. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Has a lot of support as far as financial and things like that. You know, what I mean, let's talk about you guys' support with your parents. You know, what you like. You know, what you don't. You know, what I'm saying dislike and, and what you want to. You know, what I'm saying try to bridge that gap type deal. Um, I'm just giving Spencer. So this is my first. Right, 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 right. So from what I've seen so far, we have a lot of parents who. Are into the traditional Spencer and it's willing to do what we need to do to make our kids successful. Okay. They just want, in my opinion so far, they just want something to be proud of. Mm. And their kids can be proud of. Mm. 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 So, with me, I mean, it, it's different for me. Um, you know, we, we get a lot of kids that some of them in good situations, some right. of them not so good situations. Right. So, you know, you got to, it's all relative on the support piece. You got some parents that can't financially. You know, yeah, whatever yeah. you need, but then you got other parents like coach. I ain't got no money, but I can get you bread. I can get you some, you know, yeah, pizza. Yeah, some yeah. pizza. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 The parent might be a manager, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Coach, get free game either. And you know, and so yeah, you know, whatever support, and that's what I tell my parents. Ain't no one way. I like that. You way. know, however you can support. You'll take that. Support. I, mm-hmm. I'll take it. Give me what you can give me. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, coach, I might be able to bring some boys up to Kennesaw State from 7 on 7. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate it. You yeah. know, so so it is however they support, and it's all relative depending on parent and their situation. I did that. You know, so I'm appreciative of, you know, whatever support I can get, even if it's just time. You know, hey, Cole, what information you need me to get out, I can, you know, basically trying to be a secretary. Right. I can this out okay. to you. I can contact the parents. I can. You know, get this. I got one parent now, and a lot of my young parents are real good that I got in the program right now. Coach, I met this guy. He does these type of uh, sleeves and this. Yeah. Hey, look, whatever you need from me, I'm support you 100. percent Okay, I want the whole team on the parent. Hey, that's, mm-hmm. that's gonna be your project, and I'm supporting you however you need me to support you. I love you know, it. so that, that, that's how it is in my situation. Have you support? Yeah. Hey, let's do it. Mm-hmm. In, any support is appreciated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And no support is too small. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, Coach, like I said, you just give us special, but let's talk mindset for a second. Right. You know what I'm saying? What type of environment, you know what I'm saying, are you trying to bring bring that? You just want to be a disciplined, yeah. hungry about it. Yeah. So we just want to be better than we were today. day We attack every day to be the best we can be today, and that's the environment we're trying to bring every day. Mm. We're trying to make the best, the best person we can make. And that's not necessarily to say the best football player, but that's academics, that's in the school, that's in the street, that's everywhere. The best person we can possibly be. Mm-hmm. And if everybody works to be the best person they can be, the football part take care of us. Okay, so I like that. So, but, 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 but let me tell you something, y'all. You know, high school is different, right? 
to where college, you know, like if a coach come in new, they can bring a whole staff with them. High school is different. You know what I mean? Because teaching involved, all that type of stuff. So how do, you know what I'm saying, y'all balance that? This is, this is anybody's question here. You know, how do y'all balance that? You know, when you go into a school and you're there or whatever, and you know you need a coach in this position, but he's a teacher. You know I mean? How do y'all handle that, man? I think it depends on your admin. Mm. I mean, you know, you got some admin that's going to put a lot more focus on what you got going on in their classroom. You got some that's going to support you as a coach and say, coach, what you need? You know, how can I support you? You know, we need to get coaches in the building. I got this teaching opening. You got a coach that fits this opening. You know, if they're going to help you get support you need around you, you know, but it just depends on the admin. Yeah. And, and, and how that goes. So if you got a good admin, which I, I feel like I got, you know, pretty good admin over there at Fitz yeah. Academy. Uh, with Dr. Jones, and uh, he supported me a whole lot, you know, with my program. And, you know, he does a good job of trying to make sure I have what I need, and he's realistic as far as his expectations and what we got to work with. I like that, you know. And so, if you got that, I think you got to some. But if you got your admin that ain't, that ain't to ride, really yeah. out there to get minded and ain't really trying to support what you got going on, it's going to be difficult for you, mm-hmm. but, but I tell you a lot of coaches all the time when you get your head coach a job, you assist the coach to that admin. Mm-hmm. So if they focus in the academic and the kid behaving in the building, they better be your focus too. Or you ain't gonna be there. Like that. <laughs> All right. And if right. they leave, their recommendation ain't gonna be good. ain't gonna be good. So if they ain't focused on wins and losses, I know you want to win. Yeah. But in order to keep your credibility and, and increase your chance of leaving, yeah, you better focus on what they want you to focus on. And so they can say he was a great guy. He did a great right, job. Right. Regardless of what your record was, if you do what they need you to do. They gonna support you. Mm. So you know, a lot of coaches gotta get their own way when it comes to that, and you know, just work on the exit, uh, the exit move. If you get up out of there, if it ain't in this situation. situation, man, how do y'all deal with parents who think Johnny needs to play defensive end instead of golf? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but, but again, his team needs, right? You know, you know I mean, how do y'all deal with that? You know, take, have a tweet about that maybe two days ago. Okay, okay. It might be best for him to answer that first. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think that, I mean, I think that you gotta, you know, you have these honest conversation with your parent, uh, whether they be whole group initially or individual. I think, I think that it has to be realistic or unrealistic expectation. Number one, and you gotta look at this. Number one, we got team need. These are team need. One thing I'm a big opponent of is I am. You think that you a linebacker at the next level, but I got you playing defense in. When you go to camp, rest to be, rest to, to be a linebacker. Mm. You can rest to go work out as a linebacker, but this is what we need here right now for our high school right here. Because, that, you know, I talk about, like, wide receiver and DB. Everybody's that wide receiver. Everybody that DB. A lot of times, some of them DBs, some of the DBs, or just like a corner, should be a safety. Some of them safety should be backers. From the back, you had a hand on the ground. Mm. First, same thing as a wide receiver. Some of the wide receivers should be tight ends. Mm. Okay? A lot of tight ends. Right. Right. Mm. So you got right. So, so, right. so you got to so be paired with false hands. I call them love lads. They want to put these love with their kids. Oh, my kid is dick because I love my child. Yeah. Your child ain't that. So you need to make sure that, that as a coach, you can't really win. And you tell them, you know what? Someone's going to get pissed off and go transfer on but at, but at the end of the day, you know what? That probably was a headache that you didn't need to deal with. Mm-hmm. And then in some of the smaller towns, they can't go. Well, they ain't got nowhere to go. They ain't got nowhere to go. And, they got, and, and listen, if you don't make a bona fide move, I'm going to get you something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to so get you. you. You'll give it. Yeah. I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah. But now, I always wondered that. You know what I mean? Because uh, I mean, I hear it a lot. You know, so the parents want their kids to play all type of positions. You know what I'm saying? But, and I think it's about team needs. But I dig that point where you say, you know what I'm saying? Now, now, so, 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 so that was that extra stuff we talked about earlier about training yeah. come in at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Johnny, for me, he got to play tackle, whatever. You know, if you think he'll tight end, give him training that tight end. Do any go to count. He prepared for that. Right. Cause I'm going to tell you, if you think you're a linebacker, bottom line, if you plan, if, if, if you're playing defense in the end, but you say you're a linebacker, defense ain't still gonna do some of the same thing because you get a certain defense, an uh, outside linebacker, he's gonna rush. Yeah. He's gonna rush and he's gonna and he's gonna drop and he's gonna drop to the flat and serve it. Well, mainly, he's gonna, he gonna rush. Yeah. He's gonna, 
because he's going to be the fourth down line. Yeah. At the end of the day, he a defense end. He's a bone defense end. So, again, go to training, take your buddy count, and work out a linebacker. I need you this for us to win because bottom line, we want to be take care of your high school program first yeah. before you worry about taking care of your university needs. Mm. You take care of the high school first, take care of home because I think that's one of the biggest things in high school football now. So much is focused on recruiting the next level. The love of community plan for the community and trying to win a championship, it, it's, it's, it's down so much in, in the bigger, I'm going to say the bigger shit. Let me, let me say some of your, some of your South Georgia, they still play for the love. Mm-hmm. They still, everybody, everybody still come, they're going to pack it out, they play for the love. But some of these smaller places, it's all about recruiting. It's all about recruiting. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's about me versus me. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm. um, wow, 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 wow. So, so y'all, you know what I mean? Typically, well, not typically, every time at the end of the show, I always give you guys the opportunity to leave the people with something. You know what I mean? So, you know, one by one, man, to leave them with something. Something positive. You know what I mean? Something that, um, hey, man, make sure good that night, man. Anybody want to get that thing first? Yeah, hey, for me, look, um, to all the parents and prospects, football is a game that, and I should say football, sports is it's a child game, but if you do what you have to do in it and you truly love it and you truly take from the game, it can change your entire life. For me, it took me as a, as a kid going up on the west side, my uh, brain showed me some things and taught me, taught me discipline, it taught me self-respect, it taught me how to be a man for my coaches to play in the game. It has completely changed my life to to now have a doctoral degree. Where when I was a kid growing up on at five hundred seven Henry Street, I would never thought I would be in the situation that I am now. But the game of football, my my, my coaches from Jane Prison, them all the guys who when I was little playing for the lines at at in the textile bowl, <laughs> they the game means right. something again with the football, basketball, live it, love it. Let it change your life. Don't let the street pull you down. I dig that. Dig that. Uh, I'll say the biggest thing is just, and something I tell my kids, love the ones who love you. Mm. And that's sports. That's life in general. Yeah. Love the ones who love you and have the back of the ones who have the back. I dig that. I dig it. Coach? With me, uh, one of the things I preach to my kids is, you know, I tell them to use football. Don't let football use you. Okay. You know, football, sports in general can open up a whole lot of doors for you. You know, if you, you want to be, you know, a, a business person and you earn scholarship doing football, use that scholarship to get that business degree and be working on your business and you use the football to get you there. Yeah. You know, so I always push my kids. Don't, don't think of it as, oh, you doing somebody else's favor. Right. Use football. Use football as an avenue to get to where you say you want to be in life. You know, a lot of times you don't have means or resources to do that outside of that. And if you if you do, that's great. God bless right. you. Right. But me, a lot of my homeboy, we didn't have those resources. Yeah. So if we went for that football scholarship or, you know, different other avenues, we wouldn't be, you know, been in the position that we're in. So, you know, I just tell them, use football. I don't let it use you. I like that. I like that. Yo, man, again, thank y'all for well, dropping in, you know what I mean? Appreciate it. I enjoyed it, dog. I, I, I can talk to y'all for shit out, man. I know my man got editing things on look, you know what I mean? So, yo, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in, y'all, to another episode of K-Said. We'll check y'all out next week and see what's going on, baby. Zip them up.